And welcome to Ask Your Academic. Today's session will cover the MSc Biomedical Sciences, the MSc Bioinformatics and the MRes Biomedical Sciences. We're joined by a number of our programme leads and hopefully another should be joining us shortly. Um, and they're here to answer any questions you might have about their programmes. Um, a number of questions have been submitted beforehand, so we'll do our best to answer all of those. But if you do have any further questions, you can pop them into the chat box and we'll keep an eye on that. I'll also pop some helpful links into that um, for anything about uh, applications or funding. Um, and the, oh, there we've got Catherine joining us. Um, and we'll also be recording this session, so that will be made available to you um, later on today. Um, so we don't have very long. So um, if it's all right, I'll get the panel to introduce themselves. And if you could give an overview of the programme that you run, that would be great. Elaine, would you like to go first? Um, yeah, yeah, so I'm Dr. Elaine Huston, and I am the um, lead on the MRes Biomedical Sciences. Um, it might be worth myself and Catherine doing a dual, a dual act here because some of our um, programme overlaps. Um, so I don't know whether, Catherine, you want to come in at that point as well and introduce yourself. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm the lead for the MSc Biomedical Sciences, but yeah, Elaine and I co-run um, a lot of things, so you'll see a lot of both of us. Yeah. yeah. So our program um, introduces students to obviously all aspects of biomedical sciences, uh, looking at discussing, critically discussing theories, evidence, research techniques um, that are relevant to biomedical sciences, and we look at the research process from designing research, so formulating and testing your hypotheses, solving problems through experimentation, um, performing techniques, analyzing and communicating science. Um, we also look at other um, transferable skills such as, as time management, looking at prioritizing tasks and meeting deadlines, teamwork, um, etc. So all of these are very, very um, applicable to biomedical sciences. So the, the programs start um, with three in semester one with three core courses. And on, these are the courses that are common to both the MSc and the MRes Biomedical Sciences. So we have a 20 credit course, which is a practical, practical based course, which provides students with molecular techniques and um, computational and writing skills, which are relevant to biomedical sciences. Uh, things that we cover in here are, are kind of basic molecular techniques, such as primer design and PCR, gel electrophoresis, um, real time quantitative PCR ligation transfer, transformation of E. coli, for instance, for cloning, um, DNA purification, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we also go on to other um, molecular techniques, such as we use qPCR in two different ways, but we also use S, um, look at protein visualization using SDS page and Western blotting. Um, we have so that's worth 20 credits of the 60 credits of your first semester. We also have another large course, which is Molecular Genetics of Disease. And this really gives up-to-date information on human disease and health issues and how they might be investigated at molecular, genetic and cellular levels. Um, it really provides you with practical experience of evaluating the literature. So there's a lot of um, um, emphasis on on how you read the literature and how you critically evaluate that, and also exploring information database. And that course is run, um, there's a, a big emphasis on student-directed learning. So whilst you'll have um, lectures within that, you'll also be in smaller groups discussing the science that's applicable within that course, and also maybe doing little presentations and posters and um, other uh, ways of communicating that to the rest of the class. Um, and then the third course that we have is presentation skills, which is 10 credits. And I'm gonna hand over to Catherine because that's her course. <laughs> So presentation skills aims to develop your skills in communicating science, whether that's verbal communication, giving a PowerPoint presentation to talk about science. Um, and it also feeds into probably most of your courses this year, 
um, in terms of practicing giving postures and practicing talking and defending your science. Um, and we also do a bit of reflective work where you sort of think about your skills and how, can, how you can improve them um, in specific ways. So very much underpinning um, a lot of what you'll do this year and also further into your careers. Okay, we'll hop back to MRes Biomedical Sciences because this is where the two programmes diverge. So semester one, you're all together, but in semester two, that's when the research projects start for biomedical sciences for the MRes uh, programme. So students have the option of doing a six month project or two three month projects and the projects that we have are from across the college, so across the MVLS college. So there's lots of different areas of biomedical uh, sciences and you work with academics within their research environments and uh, on projects with them. So um, I'm sure there'll be questions about that later on, so I won't go into that in any more detail at this stage. So uh, over to Catherine again as she will. So for the MSc programme in semester two, there are uh, 11 weeks worth of optional courses, which we break up into blocks. So the first three week block, um, I think there's five choices as animal models of disease, neuroscience, animal models, um, diagnostic technologies as an introduction to R, which is a, a bioinformatics way of uh, processing data. Um, and there's a course on current trends and challenges within the biosciences. Then the second three week block, um, we have a course on technology transfer and commercialization, one on neuroinflammation, emerging viruses, genome editing. And then after that, we have a five week block, which are 20 credit courses, a wee bit longer. Um, another course using R for processing next generation sequencing data, uh, an overview of various omics technologies, Bioimaging, so working with microscopy um, images and how to analyze those. Cancer focused on tumor, tumor microenvironment and biomarkers. Clinical genomics and um, introduction to medical communication. So those are options. So you would choose three optional courses out of those. And then we have a five week course, um, which is compulsory, which is more student directed. You choose a paper of your choice and write a review and a research proposal. So by that point, you're much more experienced, you know what you're doing and so you're able to choose something that fits with your interests and, and work on that. And then after that, you move into the project phase. Um, so we have a range of types of projects from across the college. Many of them are lab-based, many of them involve data analysis, bioinformatics, which is a, a massive area in biology these and then some projects um, are sort of systematic reviews of the literature, so um, looking for, for papers already published and bringing out data for those to answer specific questions. Um, yeah, short and sweet overview of our programme. Mark, do you like to do it for bioinformatics? I will, thank you, Naomi. Um, so my name is Dr. Mark Bailey. I'm in the School of Molecular Biosciences. Um, and I, along with my colleague, Dr. Catherine Crouch, who's in the School of Infection and Immunity, um, we run the MSc in Bioinformatics program. Um, so what happens in bioinformatics is that it's, it's really all about both the computing and the biology, as you can probably imagine from the title. Um, it's, it's really for people who want to know a great deal about how bioinformatics, the basis for it, and how it is implemented. Um, so we cover lots of stuff about all of the four main omics approaches, um, genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics, including how next generation sequencing data are analyzed, etc. cetera. Um, so this is all kind of staple fare for th people who would um, want to be doing something that they they think of as bioinformatics, but we don't just it's we don't just view it as a glorified training course. You do find out what the data look like and how to process them and how to analyze them. That is a that is an essential and core part of the program. But 
going going underneath that, you actually learn a great deal about how to do programming, how databases work, how to build databases, uh, and a great deal besides about how the basic computing works, including command line and Linux, Unix type computing, um, as well as stats and R. So all of those things are kind of uh, incorporated into our program, both in terms of the core courses that everyone does and in terms of some of the choice that you get um, for the optional courses. Um, so the way we've structured the program, you um, all the students do compulsory courses in semester one that are really teaching them about the basics of the computing, the stats, uh, bioinformatics and things about programming. And then in semester two, as um, Catherine and Elaine have already said, we have this kind of block-like timetable structure where there are a series of timetable blocks one after the other. And there are, for, for several of those blocks in our program, there are um, options that you can take either of, for example, two or three different courses, um, depending on what you want your focus to be in the program. So you can, to some extent, you can construct the degree that you that you want to. Um, and then obviously in the summer, we have the um, 60 credit projects, um, which are worth a third of the program. And those are, all our students are given a list of available projects, or they can find their own projects to do and, a, and a, a supervisor who would like to supervise that project. Um, and those are very much kind of working in at the deep end, doing real programming or bioinformatics or something very closely related. They're dry projects, there's no wet element to them. You're not generating the data in wet experiments at, in, at the bench, but you are. You may be taking data or you may be writing programs um, to deal with data or some other approach or to deal with visualization, for example. Um, so that's that's our overview of the program. If anyone is interested, we, we there are documents we can provide that give, go into a little bit more detail about the core elements of it and the nature of the optional bits. Okay, thanks, Naomi. Thank you. Um, and we've got a, well, it's actually linked to a question. So for the optional courses, when do students choose them? Is that at the very start or do they choose them throughout? So we have a session um, in November where all the leads of the different optional courses um, give a short presentation um, and then students pick their courses after that. So it's not first come, first served. You don't have to do it before you've arrived in Glasgow. So you've got a bit of time to get used to things and have, get a feel for what you're interested in. Um, some of the courses are capped because they're based in computer clusters and we have a limited number of spaces and some courses are really popular so we have to put a cap on them. So occasionally you might get your second choice rather than your first choice, but most students um, get their first choices. Um, but yeah, that's done in November. And that's that's similar from M MSc Bioinformatics and we kind of go through the same process towards the end of semester one. Um, we're, we're kind of in the pool along with biomedical sciences and, and a few of the other programmes. So that, that's really when the choices need to be made. Don't worry if the choice has not been finalised by the summer. Perfect. And then we've got a question in our QA that's asking, do any of the optional courses have lab exposure for the biomedical sciences MSc? No, none of the optional courses are lab based. Um, some of them have sort of online labs, as it were, so sort of quizzes and tasks and videos and things um, through online. Um, a lot of them do use sort of computer-based labs, as it were, so you'd be analysing data on the computer, so, you know, that's appropriate for their discipline, but none of them are in a wet lab pipetting or handling cells. Thank you. Um, and Mark, we had a question uh, for bioinformatics asking, do any of the modules cover command line in UNIX slash Linux? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's an, that, that's an easier one than you might think, Naomi. Um, <laughs> uh, absolutely, yes. We're, that is part of what we cover as, as kind of core background computing. 
So we have specific instruction in how Unix and Linux work. So that covers all of the command line bits of computing that you were asking about. And um, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Naomi, could you just say the rest of the question? I've forgotten. Was there another bit to it? It was command Unix. line in Unix slash Linux. Yeah, OK, so that, that covers it. Yes, so we, we definitely do cover that area of computing, yes. Perfect. <laughs> um, and how are the classes assessed throughout the year? Is it a mix of assessments, exams? How does it work? So there's quite a range of assessments. Each course does things a bit differently, and that's partly to develop your skills. So some a couple of courses have a sort of exam style assessment. These are all online um, over a certain period of time exam style questions, but most of the assessments they can be written coursework, it could be a poster which you then talk about with an assessor. Some assessments um, are a conversation with assessors, we call that a, a viva. Um, what else do we have? We have lab reports. Um, so there's some course, some of the optional courses have group work where you work as a group to produce something and then you also write something individually about that. Elaine, any obvious ones I've missed? Um, I suppose there's also production of videos to communicate as well, um, science. So certainly in our degree groups of so mine and Catherine's, uh, there's a big emphasis on communicating science. So things where you're um, talking about your science or showing your science to others um, is a big part of our assessment. And that, as Catherine says, includes posters, presentations, videos, um, vivas, etc. For bioinformatics, um, very much the same range of types of assessment. I don't think we have any poster assessments, but I think we do have examples of all of the other types that Catherine and Elaine have, have just mentioned. Thank you. Um, and in terms of class time, I know there's no such thing as a typical week, but how many hours per, I suppose, course might a student be in on campus? So we're sort of, it's hard, it's hard to answer that. Our baseline guide is if a course is 10 credits, then that should be 10 hours of face-to-face -face instruction. Um, so in semester one, that's a total of 60 credits. So that would be a minimum of 60 hours face-to-face. -face. So what's that, five hours a week? But actually in practice, it's quite a lot more than that because the lab time is not kind of that. We have computer labs. Um, so it's quite busy, actually, I would say. I think um, you're not sitting around twiddling your thumbs an awful lot. <laughs> you're either doing face-to-face -face or you're working. You no, know, there's a lot going on. I expect bioinformatics is the same. But as well, I would just add to that. So there's a number of courses, the three courses within semester one run um, in parallel. So you'll have more than one course each week and some weeks will be a lot busier than others in terms of your, your actual on-campus time. So for, for bioinformatics, a, a similar message for those of you interested, um, except that I would have said it's even more intensive in terms of contact time than what Catherine and Elaine have suggested in many weeks, but not all the weeks. Um, so when we have courses running in parallel, you would need to be on campus every day for, for probably contact time lasting several hours, because in some cases you're doing more than one session a day or more than one course on each day. Um, although we try and split the courses up across the week so that you can kind of get your head into one thing on any one day, to, to some extent at least. Um, our, our, and because it's computing and because many of our students don't have a lot of computing expertise, we really need to be in the room with you, shepherding you through the, a very steep learning curve uh, while, while you're still kind of finding your feet in the computing. So actually we spend more time in contact with you than, than, uh, than is average for most um, taught master's programs. I would come back on that as well and say ours is probably more as well. So just to emphasize what Catherine said before. So if you're doing practicals, you might be in nine till five all week um yeah and for some of our courses they, they are pretty intensive um you you are spending uh well over half the week in in contact sessions 
And I'm assuming that will become clearer when students register. So at August time, is that right? And they start building their sort of timetable, they'll be able to get that and make childcare arrangements or whatever. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, and then there's another question in our chat box asking about the project. Is it possible to collaborate with professors or supervisors at other universities or do they have to be based at University of Glasgow? Okay, that's a good question. So most of our, so I'll maybe tell you a little bit about how the projects are organised. So we have as, as all academics within the college, so that encompasses eight different schools, they submit um, projects to a database and then we um, organise those projects so that the ones that are appropriate for each programme are listed for the students on that programme. They then have a selection and choose the top, for our programmes, the top five uh, projects of their interest. And um, they then are, it depends whether you're MRS or MSC, the, the processes are slightly different, but then you will get a project which is in your area of interest. Um, assuming that obviously that's aligned with what the academics are working on at that time in our university. To answer the question a bit more specifically for this particular um, question, there is an option to do it outside of the university. So we have a, a process called Firth of Glasgow. Um, it's not very often taken up, but that is something that we can explore with students that are particularly interested in that, yes. So bioinformatics is yeah, very much the same as what Elaine has said. Most of our students do projects with University of Glasgow um, academics, but it is possible to work in Glasgow, but at a separate institution, such as the Beetson Institute for, for cancer, cancer Research, for example, um, or elsewhere in Scotland or elsewhere in the world. We've had a few students go to far flung places like Texas or Japan to do their projects. Um, over the years, but but as I said, most students tend to choose a, a project with a supervisor who is at Glasgow Uni. Um, the, there's another question that's kind of uh, slightly related, um, which is I guess is just coming up, um, and that is that. For, so for bioinformatics, our, our projects tend to be individual projects. Just occasionally, you'll have several students doing a project with the same supervisor but they're generally well differentiated projects. So you might be working in a team environment, but you're doing your own project. Um, so I know that I know that's not strictly true for all the programs, but I just thought I'd highlight that for bioinformatics first. Catherine, do you want to come in on that as well? I mean, I guess with biomedical sciences, you may, as uh, Mark was implying, be in a, a team with various other students and you, you might be doing very similar things to the other students, so you have a chance to you know, discuss and work with them. But then the write-up is yours individually, so it's not a group write-up, you're not depending on the other students for your grade, you're just benefiting from the discussion and working side by side with them. Um, maybe just along the whole project side of things, so you know, we have a wide range of, of projects, but we cannot guarantee you an individual project. Um, and I'll, you know, you may well say, oh, I'd really like to do my project in neuroscience or something. So we would do our very best to accommodate that, but we can't absolutely guarantee that. So maybe just to make you aware that there are a number of other MSc programmes in the college that are more specialised than biomedical sciences. There's brain sciences, there's cancer, there's immunology, there's infection biology, there's stem cells. So if you are actually know what area you're interested in and really want to focus on that, um, you might not have been aware of the range of other programmes that we offer. So do have a look at those if you're quite decided right now as to what you'd like to focus on. Thank you. Um, and then there was uh, another question. Are there any prerequisites required for the stats modules in the MSc Bioinformatics? OK, thank you for that question. Um, so basically, we try we we take students who have very little background in computing or quantitative sciences. And we try and get you to a point where you at least understand how to how those work and how to do them. 
um, if, even if you're not a kind of a world expert on it by the end of the year. But for, for things like stats, we basically teach it from the ground up. We do not expect any particular prerequisites in terms of uh, prior learning of stats. We do need you to go reasonably, reasonably quickly up that learning curve, but we, but we teach it in a way that allows that to happen. So uh, you, you, learn it, you learn it from the ground up. So don't worry if you haven't got a big background in that area. But you kind of do, it kind of goes with the idea that you've chosen bioinformatics. You kind of need to have a facility for quantitative ideas and for computing. That's, that, that would be the, a good basis for choosing bioinformatics as your degree. Okay. Perfect. And Mark, just on that, there was another question that came through before today asking if students need to provide their own laptop. Yes, a good question. Um, most students arrive with their own laptop. It is not essential to bring your own laptop. We have nearly all of our practical classes are in computer clusters, so you can use a computer, a, a university computer in a cluster um, that's wired up to the wall um, for con connectivity. But it is quite acceptable to do the whole program using your own laptop that you bring to each class if you want to do that, that is absolutely fine. If you don't have a laptop and you and you want to work um, out, outside working hours, it is possible to uh, to arrange for you to be loaned a laptop. That is a thing that can happen. Perfect. Um, and we are just nearly finished with our session. That was very fast. Um, but are there any preparations that students can make before they begin in September? I think arrive in good time. I think our courses hit the ground running, they're very busy. So, you know, get here ahead of time and get everything organised, make sure your accommodation is organised well ahead in advance so that when the courses start, you're ready to, to focus on, on learning and are not still trying to find, trying to organise your bank account or get your visa, you know, stamped, whatever. So give yourself time. I would say as well, if you have a think about what areas you need support in before you come so where are the your your kind of strengths and weaknesses and then you can always chat to us there's lots of resources across the university that you can you can hook up with and and develop skills that you want to want to um, develop and it's good to know what you want out of your courses before you come so that you can you can um, use the correct resources to develop that. For bioinformatics, as I said, we teach it from the ground up, but um, and therefore you don't have to have done anything specific to prep. Uh, but anything you've done to enhance your molecular biology, um, basic understanding of molecular biology, or anything you've done in stats or R or Python on the programming side, you don't have to have done anything, but anything you have done will be helpful using any online resources that you can find. There's nothing very specific uh, that you need to do. And just to answer that question about laptops, a decent spec up for a laptop would be a good idea in terms of amount of RAM and how good the processor is and having a graphics processor, but there's no absolute specific spec that you need for a laptop. Just don't get a really little cheap one. I've just posted as well in the chat some links to our molecular methods app, which kind of gives you some introduction to the kind of basics that you should know coming in, in terms of molecular biology. So they might be quite useful for people. Perfect, thank you. Well, that is us now at the end of our session. Uh, thanks very much to our panel for taking time out of your busy day. We covered a lot of information there, so well done. Um, if you've not had a chance to submit your question, you can send it to the programme administration team email address and you'll find that on the programme webpage on our website near the top in the blue box. Um, as I said, we have recorded this session, so that will be sent out to you later today uh, with the password for accessing it. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody for attending and we hopefully see you all in September. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 bye, -bye.